Today we're talking about systems of linear inequalities and what I first want to do is review basic linear inequalities. So like solutions to systems of equations, a solution to a system of inequalities is any ordered pair that makes the inequality true. Okay, if it's a system of equations, it will make the equation true. If it's an inequality, it will make the inequality true. So what we're going to do first is determine if the ordered pair is a solution to the linear inequality. So I've got this ordered pair here. Remember, that's x comma y. And then I've got this linear inequality. Okay, and I know it's linear because it, is, it has an x and a y variable. You know, again, there's not a variable. Um, y is not in the denominator. X and y are not multiplied together. I know it's linear. I know also it's an inequality because I have an inequality symbol here. So the first thing we're going to do is just algebraically determine if this is a solution to this linear inequality. And how I'm going to do that is substitute the values for x and y into the inequality. And I'm going to determine if I have a statement that's true or false, or see if I have a statement that's true or false at the end of it. Um, if it's true, it is a solution. If it's not, it is not a solution. So let's plug in 4 for x. So I'm going to plug in 4 minus 2 times y, which is negative 2, is greater than Eight. And then I'm just going to simplify this. So for negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 is greater than 8. 4 plus 4, I have 8 is greater than 8. Is 8 greater than 8? No, it's not. 8 is not greater than 8. Therefore, this is not a solution to this linear inequality. What I want you to be very careful about is what if you had something like this? What about 8 is greater than or equal to 8? Now would it be a solution? It would be because 8 is equal to 8, greater than or equal to. It satisfies that or equal to, right? If it's or, it has to satisfy 1. Okay, it could be greater than 8, but it could also be equal to 8. So in this case, it would be yes. All right, would be yes. So now let's move on to solving this graphically. So we're going to take this linear inequality, we're going to convert it to slope-intercept form, and then we're going to graph it on this coordinate plane. So the first thing I'm going to do, x minus 2y is greater than 8. I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and I get negative x plus 8. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. So I get y is less than positive 1 half x minus 4, right? So because I divided by that negative, then the sign switches, right? I divided by a negative, my sign gets flipped, and then everything gets divided by negative 2. So negative 1 divided by negative 2 is positive, 1 over 2. 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4, so minus 4. And now we're going to graph this on this coordinate plane. So this is meant to be a review, and I'm going to zoom in here because we're graphing. So I have this little table over here that hopefully serves as a reminder for the boundary lines and shading when you're graphing linear inequalities. So the first thing that you're looking at is whether you have a solid or a dotted line. So if you have symbols that are less than or equal to, or are greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, you're going to have a solid line, right? So it's going to look just like that. If you have a symbol that is greater than or less than, so you don't have that or equal to, you're going to have a dotted line or a dashed line just like that. So let's go ahead and just graph this line. The first thing I'm going to do is graph the line 1 half x minus 4. So I'm going to plot my y-intercept at negative 4, and then my slope is 1 over 2. So I'm going to rise 1 and run 2 to the right. And I'm just going to plot a bunch of points on this line. So I've, I've at least got my line here, right? That's the line that we are looking at. That's our boundary line. And then I'm going to determine, is this a solid line or a dotted line? And in this case, because it's less than, it's going to be a dotted line. So I just put little dash marks. They're not filled in. What this is saying is that every point on this line is not a part of the solution. And the actual point, um, in question, which was 4, negative 2, is in fact a point um, on this line. So if I go over 4, negative 2, that's the point right there, right? And it's not a solution. 
So um, let's now talk about how we're going to shade this. And I'm going to change colors here. So let's do this color right here. So when we talk about shading, because we're talking about an inequality, right, we shade. So we're going to shade if I have a greater than or a greater than or equal to, I shade above. That's up here, okay? And I like to put a greater than symbol up here on top. If I have a less than or less than or equal to, I'm going to shade below, okay? That's down here. So when, when students struggle with this, it's usually when you have like a really steep slope and they're like, but it's left and right. Oh, no, it's still above or below. So in this case, because I have a less than, I'm going to be shading below, right? So put your pencil on that line and go down to that less than, okay? So it doesn't matter if you have a really steep slope or not, put your pencil on the line and go down for less than. So everything down here below that is below the line and any point in this shaded region also satisfies this linear inequality. So this is your solution set, right? So any point on there is in your um, solution set. It would be a feasible solution for this linear inequality. What I want to really point out is if you have horizontal and vertical lines, um, how do you shade horizontal and vertical lines? So the line X is less than three. Well, let's first plot the line X equals three, okay? How do I know that this is a dotted line? There's the line X equals three. I know it's dotted because it's just less than, right? There's not an or equal to. And then where is every point less than, where X is less than three? It's to the left, right? So all of this is in your solution set for X is less than three. What about y is greater than negative 1? Well, let's plot the line. y equals negative 1. It's a horizontal line, and it's down here. How do I know that it's solid? I know it's solid because of this or equal to, right? That line underneath the inequality. Where are all of the y values greater than negative 1? Well, this is pretty simple, right? I've still got my above and below, so I'm going to shade it above that line. Okay, so that we're just reviewing those horizontal and vertical um, boundary lines for linear inequalities. So now let's move on to your systems of linear inequalities. And let me zoom in here. So systems of linear inequalities. A solution to a system of linear inequalities must satisfy both linear inequalities. So if I have a system, I have multiple linear inequalities. And in this case, we're going to be looking at just two. So the example states to graph the system of linear inequalities on the coordinate plane. All ordered pairs in the solution set are in the overlapping shaded region. So this is your double shaded region, okay? So I'm going to show you how I do this, okay? And uh, I do it a little bit differently for Algebra 1 than I do for Algebra 2. So I'm going to show you how I do it for Algebra 2. So the first thing we're going to do is we've got now multiple linear inequalities here. I'm going to put each of them in slope-intercept form. So this first one is 9x minus 3y is less than or equal to 6. So I'm going to solve for y. I do that by subtracting 9x. So I get 9x, uh, negative 9x plus 6. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 3. So y is greater than or equal to, right, because I'm dividing by that negative. Negative 9 divided by negative 3 is positive 3, so 3x. 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. So here I have this um, linear inequality, and I'm going to go ahead and graph that boundary line. So 3x minus 2, that's what I'm looking at. I'm going to first graph my y-intercept at negative 2, and then my slope is positive 3. So I'm going to go up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, up 3 and then I can go down three and over one this way, right? Okay, and I know this line is going to be solid because of this or equal to right here, right? Or equal to, and I'm gonna try to draw it as straight as possible. And then I'm going to write greater than or equal to, okay, up here. But I'm not gonna shade it quite yet. Okay, I'm actually going to, and if you want, you can draw your greater than and less than down here. Um, what you can do is you can shade that, go ahead and shade that whole uh, region, which, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and show you that right now. Okay, so I'll go ahead 
and shade everything greater than or equal to this one right here. So everything up here is where y is greater than or equal to everything on that line, okay? Or the x, when I plug in the x values, I get a y value greater than um, that line. So let's move on to the next one. So the next one is x plus 3y is less than 3. So I've got x plus 3y is less than 3, and I'm going to put it in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to subtract 3, or I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and then I'm going to divide every term by 3. So negative 1 third x plus 1, and I have this line right here, or this linear inequality that now I'm going to graph. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this y-intercept at positive 1. And then my slope is negative 1 third. So I can go down 1 over 3 this way, right? I know I've got a negative slope when I graph it that way. And I can go up 3 um, this way. All right. Am I graphing that right? And then is this going to be a, dot, a dotted line or a solid line? It's going to be a dotted line because it's just less than. Okay. So here's my less than. Okay, and I know um, right here, I'm going to write over here, this is going to be less than. So if I shade this line, everything less than this line is going to be down here. Your solution set to a system of linear, linear inequalities is your double shaded region. So it's actually going to be where the pink lines and the blue lines overlap. So nothing up in here. That's not a part of your solution. This is not a part of your solution. Everything in here is where your solution set is, right? Right in here. I know there's a lot going on in there, but that's the only part that I, so in algebra one, I just leave it kind of like double shaded, like how I just did. But in algebra two, I actually will only shade the solution part. Okay, so this is the feasible region. That is the solution set. That is the where the solutions lie for this system of linear inequalities. Any point, um, any point within that shaded region. Now, you've also got any point on this solid line right here, the pink solid line. But um, if you have like this point where these two lines intersect, that would not be a solution to this system because one of the lines is dotted meaning every point on that dotted line isn't in the solution set. So if it's not in the solution set for one inequ linear inequality, it's not going to be in the, a solution in the system. The very last thing I want to do is determine if each of the ordered pairs below are part of the solution set for this system of linear inequalities. The first point that we're going to look at is negative 4, 2. And let's see, I'm not going to go ahead and change colors here to green. So negative 4, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, negative 4, 2 is right there, and um, it is in the um, overlapping shaded region. It is in the overlapping shaded region, so it is a, in the solution set. So 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2. Um, it almost looks like it isn't, but you could always plug it in and see if it's a solution, and it is. Negative 3, 2, if you go over... 1, 2, negative 3, 2, that is a point on the dotted line. Therefore, it is not in the solution set. And then 0, negative 2 is right here. It's on the solid line for one linear inequality, and it's in the shaded region for the other linear inequality. Therefore, it is a solution to this system of linear inequalities. And that concludes your notes over systems of linear inequalities. I hope it was helpful.